the first time I went to rehab in 2001, um, I just started, I was in tears, and the doctor said, why are you crying? And I said, what kind of example am I giving to my daughter? And he said, you're going to give her the example of determination and hard work and what someone can do, what someone's capable of doing if they put their mind down to it. That's what you're going to show your daughter. I graduated high school in the 80s. I always considered myself a product of the 70s, smoking marijuana, drinking, partying. In October of 1982, I gave all that stuff up, but once I had my accident, I got introduced to opiates, and that, that changed my life uh, in a really negative way for about 30 years. September 7th, 1983, I was heading home for lunch on my motorcycle, going around a sharp corner. There was some gravel. I tried to correct, and I uh, flew off the motorcycle, bounced twice on the sidewalk, and then landed on a fire hydrant. I broke my pelvis, hip, back, coccyx, sacroiliac, pubic bone, five ribs, messed up my shoulder. My spine collapsed when I hit the fire hydrant. My whole body went around it, and they said one more, one or two more millimeters, it, it would have severed the cord, and I would have been paralyzed. So I was in intensive care for seven days. I was permitted every three hours to get uh, pain relief. Every three hours on the hour, I'd ring the bell. Would get the shot, say at eight in the morning, a pill at 10 o'clock, a shot at noon, a pill at two o'clock, a shot at four, a pill at six o'clock. Everything became about that for pain relief for the first couple of weeks. I uh, know the doctors told me, you're gonna get hooked on this stuff, but, but don't worry, we'll wean you off of it. Uh, I, I was taking anywhere from 6 to 16 pain pills a day for a year. By 2001, I ended up for the first time in a drug rehab. I had about a year and a half doing well, clean. I had a sponsor, was going to meetings three, four, five times a week. And then one night at work, I'm working, and I start getting this pain in my lower back. I had kidney stones. What do they do for kidney stones? They give you morphine. And uh, that got me back on opiates after about a year, a year and a half off. And got straightened out again for a little while. I ended up having another bout of kidney stones. I've had kidney stones twice. I dabbled back on the pain medicine, Vicodins and Percocets and, and medicine like that up until about 2011. Then I told him the Percocets weren't working anymore and he put me on the fentanyl patch. And I started abusing the fentanyl. And it was just like being in zombie land. I tried to quit over and over and it's impossible to quit it. I would be curled up in a ball, laying on the floor, sick, shaking, every joint in my body hurting because it was screaming for that painkiller. The edge of addiction is desperation in a very real kind of life and death sense, putting a needle in my arm. That was my next step, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to live. While I was still taking it, I started taking uh, Taekwondo. I knew I needed to do something for myself. I knew I was going down that, just down that horrible path in life. Next thing you know, my sisters are inviting me back for game night. And well, it wasn't game night, it was an intervention. And that was in 2013. And I was happy to go, I was actually happy to go to rehab. I knew my life was just out of control. Uh, as far as the drug addiction went. So I went to rehab for the second time in 2013. I stayed nine days. I got out March 25th of 2013 and went right back to my Taekwondo class, told my teacher where I was. I, I was afraid he was gonna judge me like crazy. And uh, first thing he did was told me I should try a Spartan race. I told him I I'm not gonna do one this year, but I promise you that I will do it next year. So uh, I made that commitment and started trying to get myself ready to do a Spartan race. And I kept with up with the Taekwondo. And so a couple of months later, my same instructor was going out to Ohio to run the beast out there. And I tried the super and that day I fell in love with Spartan. Grinning from ear to ear, 
thanking God that I'm able to be out there in the woods running through these trails and just smiling and I'm, yes, this, this is it. This is what I want to do. Um, it's changed the way I feel. I wake up every morning, I can just jump out of bed and I feel great. I can go for a run, I, I, I'm smiling, I'm happy. I retired a little over a year ago, which is how I have time to do all this training now. So I, I, I train anywhere from two hours to seven hours or eight hours, five or six days a week. Lifting, running, swimming, biking. And I do a lot of stretching. The older I get, the more I'm getting into stretching, which is a big help. One of the big motivating factors for me is to inspire other people. That drives me. I decided when I retired that I was going to start training again. I was going to be serious about it and I was going to be good at it. And I wasn't going to give anything to anyone. Anyone that's faster than me that beats me, I can accept that. But I won't accept them working harder than me. I won't. I'm going to work so much harder next year than I did this last year. I'm going to be faster at 61 than I was at 60. To me, it goes back to that ruggedness, that grit, that determination. I'm just not willing to let someone beat me at something. I don't care what it is. I do have to take ibuprofen. I do have back pain. I do have shoulder pain. I do have knee pain. I've had surgery four times on my back, once on my knee, once on my shoulder. Pain's just something that you live with. And the more I get in shape, the harder I work, the less the pain is. The edge is desperation. The edge is determination. The edge is a, a dark, deep hole that you don't want to fall into. The edge brings out the best in people. The edge brings out the best in me. The edge is either cry and quit or, or, or pick up your head and freaking go. That, that's the edge to me.